This series of letters represents a hypothetical sequence of nucleotides in one strand of the DNA molecule. By studying this sequence, you'll see how Francis Crick and his colleagues determined the number of nucleotides that make up an individual word called a codon in the genetic code. Let's begin with the conclusions first. The researchers determined that a codon consists of three nucleotides, which make up a triplet, and that these nucleotides are read in a particular register called a reading frame. To determine the size of a codon, the researchers began by producing mutations in the normal sequence of genes. They focused on mutating the R2 gene of the bacteriophage T4 using the chemical mutagen acridine. We'll use this hypothetical sequence to illustrate their experiment. If a cell used this sequence to make a protein, all of the amino acids in the sequence would be the same. We should easily be able to see the effects of changing the gene sequence because the normal sequence is so uniform. The researchers knew that acridine typically produces mutated genes by either deleting a nucleotide from or adding a nucleotide to the normal sequence. Let's first examine the effect of a deletion mutation. The dot shows the point of deletion of the nucleotide. Notice that all triplet groups to the right of the deletion are changed. These new triplet sequences code for a series of amino acids different from the series encoded by the normal sequence. This type of mutation results in complete gibberish at the protein level and totally destroys the function of the protein. Acridine can also produce mutations by adding a single nucleotide base pair to the gene sequence. In this case, an unspecified nucleotide base, indicated by the letter N, is added between two bases in a codon. The addition of a single nucleotide causes re-registration of the triplet reading frame. Notice that all triplet groups to the right of the addition are changed. Like the deletion mutation, the addition mutation results in the production of a non-functional protein. Although the researchers did not learn the size of codons from these single mutations alone, by combining two or more mutations, they did discover some intriguing patterns in which protein function was restored. Crick and his colleagues observed that certain pairs of mutants, when allowed to undergo crossing over or recombination, yielded double mutants with restored gene function. When an addition mutant and a deletion mutant are genetically crossed, a double mutant can form. A double mutant has both the addition and deletion mutations in the same gene. Here, the relevant portions of the two mutants are joined schematically to show the resulting double mutant. The double mutant has one extra nucleotide base at the addition position and one less nucleotide base at the deletion position. When we re-register the reading frame as we did earlier, we can see that the two mutations counteract each other. To the left of the addition mutation, the reading frame is normal, as indicated in black letters. To the right of the addition mutation, there is an altered reading frame, shown in red, until the deletion mutation is encountered. At that point, the reading frame is restored to normal, again indicated by black letters. When we compare the normal sequence to the sequence with the combined addition plus deletion, we see that after a short sequence of gibberish, indicated by red, the correct reading frame is restored in the double mutant. Although this sequence is different from the normal sequence, in this case, it's short enough that it does not destroy the function of the gene. Most of the acridine-induced mutations studied were classified as either additions or deletions based on their ability to undergo recombination to create a functional R2 gene. Crick recognized that if the genetic code was indeed composed of triplets of bases, combining three additions into the same gene ought to restore the reading frame and thus the function of the R2 gene. The researchers allowed the three addition mutants to undergo recombination. To demonstrate the restoration of the correct reading frame, let's re-register the lines that break up the sequence into triplet codons. The triplet codons that are different from the normal sequence are shown in red. When we compare the sequence with three additions to the normal sequence, we can see that the original reading frame is restored. The short sequence of gibberish, shown in red, would code for an altered protein sequence, but in this case, the sequence is too small to destroy the protein's function. 
If the genetic code is composed of triplets of bases, combining three deletions into the same gene also ought to restore the reading frame and the function of the R2 gene. The researchers allow the three deletion mutants to undergo recombination. To demonstrate the restoration of the correct reading frame, let's again re-register the lines that break up the sequence into triplet codons. Triplet codons that are different from the normal sequence are shown in red. When we compare the sequence with three deletions to the normal sequence, we can see that the original reading frame is restored. The short sequence of gibberish, shown in red, would code for an altered protein sequence. However, the difference in this case is too small to destroy the protein's function. Through their study of acridine-induced mutations, Crick and his co-workers lent experimental support to George Gumeau's hypothesis of the three-base codon. They confirmed that there are two types of such mutations. One type results from the deletion of one DNA base, the other from the addition of one DNA base. By combining the two types of mutations, the researchers had convincing evidence of the nature of the mutations. One addition and one deletion can be combined to make double mutants that restore the function of the gene. But the researchers' most significant contribution came from the demonstration that three additions or three deletions could be combined to restore gene function. This could happen only if the genetic word or codon was three bases long.